In this video, I'm going to go over how you can update the Apollo cache after a mutation fires off. Now, this is important to do after a mutation happens because usually the data changes on the server side and you want to reflect that and show that to the user so they're not seeing anything that is stale or missing data. Now, to do this, there is three ways in Apollo. We're going to take a look at each one of those methods. Now, in a usual project, I'll actually tend to use all three of those methods, but in different places. So we're going to take a look at why you, why you would want to use each one and where to use each one. Now, to start off, we're going to be looking at the first one, which is called refetch queries. Now, to do this, I am using the React Apollo Hooks library. Um, but this works the same if you're using the render component or the higher order component. Uh, and here I just have a create book mutation. So basically what I want to happen is after I create a book, um, I want to update the query that fetches all the books or displays all the books or queries all the books, you'd say. So to do this, I have this create book mutation that I'm calling here. And I'm just passing in the title and the author as the two variables to create the book. And then I'm passing in this refetch queries field. And here is where I pass in an array of all the queries that I want updated after this create book happens. So there may be multiple queries that are dependent on new books being created. So in that case, I might have an array here. So what you have is an array of objects and the objects have a query and you pass that in. So what is this query? This is just the GraphQL document here that uh, that you want to be refetched. So in this case, I have a GraphQL query called books. Um, so here it could be an array. You could also pass in any variables that uh, is specific to that query as well. All right, so I just have a single one here. But what's going to happen is after this mutation gets fired off, a query is going to get fired off. So it's going to be a total of two network requests. Um, and it's going to get the latest data from the server. So it's actually refetching the data from the server after the mutation happens. So really the only downside with using this approach is it's going to be two network requests. So you have an extra one firing off after the mutation. But other than that, this is the easiest technique. All I have to do here is specify the query itself and then uh, you're good to go. You're also gonna get the latest data from the server, so you're not missing any queries or books that might have happened on someone else's account or website in between these requests. All right, so let's look at technique number two. All right, so technique number two is to let Apollo automatically update the cache for you. Now, there's kind of a condition that this only works in a specific circumstance. So specific circumstance number one is you have to be updating. So if I am creating something or adding something onto a list or I'm deleting an item, all those would not work. Apollo cannot automatically update those. What it can update is let's say I change the title of a book or I change the author of a book. It's going to up, be able to automatically update the cache if you're just updating a type uh, like this, like a book. So you notice uh, I have this update book mutation that I'm doing it for. And you'll notice I'm actually writing no update code whatsoever um, here. Um, so really, this is a nice one to do when you are doing any kind of updates because you don't have to do anything else, at least client side. I'm going to show you something in a second you have to set up on the server side to get this to work. Uh, but this is all the changes you need. You just pass in your variables here uh, and you don't have to call anything else. So on the server side though, to get this to work, what you need to do is the uh, entity that is going to be updated. So in this case, I have a book type that I'm updating. You need to make sure it has an ID type um, and you use the ID type uh, like this. So you have to have a field called ID or I think you can give it another name, but you have to tell Apollo about that and then use this ID type on it. Now, when you do that in your update book mutation, you need to make sure and pass in or update whatever type you're updating. You need to make sure and return that book with the fields that were actually changed in the ID. So what Apollo actually does is it uses this ID to look it up in the cache automatically and it just changes out the fields that have been changed. So assuming that you're doing an update and assuming that you are returning all the fields that are updated from the mutation and you have this ID field, um, returned and in the type itself, 
then Apollo can automatically update something like this. Uh, so this is a nice one to do, and I would recommend this uh, whenever you want to do an update of a value because it's just going to automatically happen. Now there are times when you're going to need to do a create or you're going to need to do an update, or sorry, a delete, or even if you are updating something, you can't always return the type. Like sometimes you return a Boolean from update instead of the type that you updated because you don't want to fetch all those fields. And sometimes you have a super deeply nested object that you don't want to return the entire thing. Uh, in that case, we're going to look at the third technique, which is manually updating the cache, which handles all these cases. So this one requires the most work, um, but you're going to avoid a network request. And this is basically the catch all. If you want to avoid the network request and the update automatic or Apollo automatically updating doesn't work for you, uh, then this is how you're going to do it. This is how you're going to update the cache yourself. So we're going to go back to the create book example. Uh, so this is the equivalent. So you'll notice here is the chunk of code that we've added here. So it's a quite a bit more than just saying uh, refetch queries on this. Uh, but what, how it works is we say the update field is what we're going to add to this object and it takes a function. So the function takes two parameters here, the store or the cache. So this allows us to access and read values and write values to the Apollo cache. And second, here is the return value after create book is uh, returns from the server. So this is going to have, uh, in my case, if we look at the create book resolver, that's gonna return a book after it's created. So that's gonna be inside of the data here. So first off, what I do, is I read the current books from the cache. So that is what this chunk of code is doing. It's also good to note that you can wrap this bit in a try catch because sometimes the book query may not actually be in your uh, cache and it will throw an error. So you may want to catch that. Uh, and by the way, in that case, if the book query is not in the cache, there's really no need to update the cache because it's not in the cache. Um, you'll notice here, uh, this is what I would recommend doing if you're using TypeScript. I'm just passing in the generic here of the type. Uh, that way I get type definition when I'm looking at. I can see I'm either going to get null or book query back. And again, you can pass in any variables that you need. Oops. Any variables. If you're fetching like an ID or something. Um, otherwise, also... A query is required so here's just the books document so this is going to read all the books from the cache so after I read the books from the cache I want to just basically append a value onto the end of this now it's good to note you do not want to mutate this value so you're going to need to create a new a new array or a new object whatever it happens to be so here is how I do that and I'm saying store dot write query so this is writing back to the cache, and you have to say which query is being written to the cache, in this case, the books query. And again, if you fetched a variable or use variables in your query, you need to add variables when you write and read from the cache. Now here's the data that's actually being passed back. I recommend adding a generic here for the query. Uh, this basically will give you type definitions to make sure that you're actually doing the right definitions for the books and whatnot you have here. Anyway, you'll see all I'm doing here is I'm grabbing from this book data up here the existing books that are in the cache. I'm creating a new array with it, and I'm adding on the end a new book. And you'll notice this is the book that I get back from the server, so data.createBook. All right, so this is just basically how you update the cache manually. You'll call store.writeQuery and put any data, new data in it. Now, one last thing that I just wanted to mention is sometimes this gets really messy especially if you have nested uh, data. So for example, this is what it looks like in some of my applications is you may have a really ugly write query where you have like nested collections and you're mapping through authors and then you have a nested book that you're doing and it just gets absolutely disgusting because we need to make this immutable or at least create a new uh, version of it. So in cases like this, my recommendation to make it a little simpler is to use the Emmer library. Uh, so we can use the produce function from that. Uh, and you'll notice this cleans up the code quite a bit. Uh, you could even use it for simple examples like this as well. Um, but basically here we just say produce. We take in the object that we want to change and we just 
obviously we just mutate it, right? So here's the deeply nested path and we just push on the new item that we want. So that's the tip I have for you if you have like deeply nested stuff that you want to update the cache for because this comes up quite a bit. Also again, um, if you need to update multiple queries, you can as well. So there's really no reason why you can't write the query twice. So you might have you know, recent books that you need to update as well. Um, and so you can write multiple queries. You can also read multiple queries if you need to. Anyway, that is just the three different techniques that you can use to update the Apollo cache. Again, I tend to probably use this the most in my application is where I'm actually updating the cache myself um, just because it saves a network request. Um, but this is definitely the easiest one to go with and really what I would probably recommend uh, because it's just simple, removes any kind of errors that you might come up with when you're updating the cache yourself because it can be quite tricky. Uh, and then now and then I'll use the the one where the Apollo cache automatically updates itself when all those conditions are met.